In this video, I will show you the basics of editing with Nitro for iOS. You start editing by tapping the top button in the right side toolbar. The top section has shot information. You can expand it to see more metadata. The next section is the histogram. You can close that for more working space. And the third area are the editing controls themselves. The sections are organized in the order that you would typically edit an image. The first section has the quick fixes. These are quick ways to improve an image. There's auto enhance, highlight recovery, spot removal, and cloning. Let's start with auto enhance. Auto enhance helps you quickly improve a picture. You can include white balance or choose between other levels or curves. Intensity lets you control how much of the auto enhance is applied. I can adjust the intensity after the fact to get myself the amount I'm looking for. The button below it lets you show the original and with the effect applied. You can also tap and hold on the image. If you have an external keyboard, you can press the M key. The left button lets you remove auto enhance and then undo and redo are at the bottom of the right side toolbar. Tap done when you're finished. At the bottom, you can see some additional buttons. The first button lets me copy adjustments. I can choose which adjustments to include. And the same goes for paste. Highlight recovery lets you bring back detail in overexposed areas of raw images. This is the original image, and this is the image after applying highlight recovery. I also made a couple of other small edits, but most of it is the highlight recovery feature. Cloning lets you copy pixels from one part of the image to another. Pick the area you want to copy from, and then use a brush to copy the pixels to the destination area. This is the original image, and this is the image after I applied cloning to it, before and after. After quick fixes, the next section has presets and LUTs. Presets let you quickly apply a bunch of adjustments to an image. Nitro comes with a set of presets, and you can make your own. LUTs let you quickly apply a look to an image. Sometimes it's things like a particular type of uh, aging effect or a film simulation. The app comes with a bunch of LUTs as well. So for example, for this image, I might apply this earth tone. There are some film simulations that are inspired by Fujifilm cameras. And there are some other um, miscellaneous effects as well. The third category are the sliders. Nitro comes with a large number of adjustments. I'm not going to go over each one in detail here. The tone adjustment gives you special controls over pro-raw, regular raw, and non-raw files. For pro-raws in particular, you have access to the tone mapping slider. Raw tuning gives you even more control over the raw decode using special hooks into Apple's raw decoder. There are powerful levels and curves adjustments. HSL lets you adjust an image by hue, saturation, and luminance. There's also a custom hue picker. There's a special black and white adjustment. And split toning lets you tint the highlights and the shadows of an image individually. There's a chromatic aberration adjustment, and it also can correct purple and green fringe. The lens adjustment lets you correct lens artifacts. It also learns from you, so after you've corrected your lens a few times, it can start to make those corrections automatically by itself. You have control over perspective. There's a color mixer and a vignette. Last but not least is masking. Masking is a very powerful feature in Nitro. Nitro lets you add five different types of masks. You can brush. There's a linear and radial gradient and two AI masks, one which can capture the subject and one which captures the background. 
any mask can have a brush applied to it. So you can use a brush to tune a gradient or one of the AI masks as well. I made a mask of Santa using the AI subject mask feature. You can see, even though it was an AI mask, I have access to the brushing tools. Brushes can be controlled by size, strength, softness, and there's also an edge aware brush that lets me follow a contour. Masks can also be controlled by luminance, color, and there's an intensity slider to adjust the entire masking effect up or down. You can apply almost any adjustment that you saw in the previous slider section. So for this Mask of Santa, I can apply all kinds of effects, such as white balance, tone, enhancement. I can apply curves, HSL, black and white, or even chromatic aberration. I also made a background mask. And what I did to that background is I darkened it. I also applied a blur and converted it to black and white. In addition, I used cloning to remove some bright red dots that I saw in the image. This is the image before, and this is the image after. And by doing all of that, I get a much nicer overall image. Now I'll show you how EdgeAware brushing works. I might want to work on the sky, but it will be a lot of work to manually mask out the rider and the grass. This is where EdgeAware brushing can really help. I'll start with a brush mask. I'll turn on EdgeAware. I can have a pretty good sized brush too. And I'll just paint straight across, right through the rider. For the rest, I can turn off EdgeAware and just quickly finish this. Now I can use, say, Deepen to get a little more color in the sky. Alternatively, I could work on the rider and the grass instead. To do that, I tap the brush icon and I pick Invert. And now I've got the grass and the rider. In that case, perhaps what I'll do, I'll use midtones, just change the feel of the foreground. Before and after. Edits are saved automatically by the app. If you're using files.app, edits are saved to an XMP file next to the original. If you're using Apple Photos, Edits are saved right into the photo library. A great feature of Nitro is the ability to move edits between the two. So you can export an image plus XMP to photos or take an image edited in photos and get an XMP file. That's a quick tour of the editing features of Nitro. Thanks for watching.